It's not that the scientists are alarmists. It's that the science is alarming. That's Bill McKibben in his now very famous Rolling Stone article, Global Warming's Terrifying New Math. And when I read The Weather Makers by Tim Flannery, I was definitely alarmed. And it wasn't an alarmist book, it was just that it was talking about an extremely alarming topic, climate change. And I had the distinct pleasure of speaking with Tim just a few days ago at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in downtown Washington, D.C. Uh, he gave a talk, he spoke with Kirk Johnson, director of the museum, and then afterwards he was signing some books. Uh, he signed my book, and then, on the spot, agreed to do an interview with me for the video blog. And Tim, if you're watching this, I can't thank you enough. That was so kind of you. Um, and I really learned a lot about how we should be looking towards the future with a lot of optimism and a lot of imagination. So that's what I wanted to leave you all with before I set you forth to watch this interview at the Museum of Natural History. If you enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Spencer here at the Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. I'm here with the amazing author, Tim Flannery. He wrote The Weather Makers, which really changed my perception about climate change. Really an amazing work. He's here talking about his new book, Atmosphere of Hope. Um, so, thank you so much for being here. I was wondering if you have a simple message for young people going forward today about climate change. What would it be? Yeah, oh, thanks, Spencer. And I, I do have a message for them. It is that hope is our most important resource, and there are good reasons for hope. Not just hope we can beat the climate problem in the longer term, but hope that we can develop some significant new areas of our, our economy that will create new wealth and new jobs and new opportunities for people uh, through following third-way technologies and some of the other things I talk about in the book. Um, but if you're young, um, just know that there is really good reason for hope. Great. So, um, nuclear, very divisive issue uh, in the climate realm. It's it's amazing or it's evil. Where do you stand on that? Well, I, I think that we're, we're seeing the picture paint itself as we go on. You know, um, nuclear power share in terms of the energy pie is declining. Um, wind is growing just as strongly now as nuclear was in the 1970s. Um, if the investment was going to come into nuclear, we would have seen it by now. But the fact is, you know, you need 15 billion dollars or more to build a nuclear plant. When you build solar or wind, you just build them one turbine at a time or one solar farm at a time. It's cheap, it's modular, it's clean, much lower risk in terms of capital, um, and that's why it's winning. And so, um, speaking of hope, if you don't mind me asking, I heard about this wind farm in Australia that was actually built by the town, that the community yeah, just yeah. wanted it. What was the name of that? I, that's it's called... Uh, oh, sorry to push you on the spot, but that was, I, that was yes. the community wind it's like, It was amazing to yeah. hear about the fact that, like, talk about hope, and hear these people who just wanted a wind farm and went out and made it And it's now their business. They're really yeah. profit from it every year. And like, trying oh, to and just, just one last thing. So, uh, in your talk, you asked us to think about looking at 2015 going forward to 2050, to think about 1915 going forward forward to 1950 and we have to use imagination so what in your mind does the ideal 2050 look like oh yeah the ideal 2050 wow <laughs> well Spencer what I hope is that it is a fantastic time for people like you to be alive mm. you'll probably be in your 50s by then or something oh maybe 40s I'll be in my 60s yeah, yeah. it's alright whatever yeah. it is um, and I really hope it'll be a fantastic and exciting time to be alive I hope that we will have we will have made big inroads on the climate problem I hope we've preserved enough of our biodiversity to make it still interesting and challenging and fascinating yes. planet. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that the quality of life that people enjoy will be just so much better that our, that our cities won't be choked with pollution, uh, that people will be healthier because they'll be cycling or walking, that we'll have an incredibly rich social life and, and a cultural life. All of that is possible. But if we want to have that, we really have to get on top of some of the problems that we face today. And that, I guess, is the challenge for the next 10, 20 years. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thanks, Spencer. So there you have it, Tim Flannery, author of The Weather Makers. He was actually there talking about his most recent book, Atmosphere of Hope. And in this book, I haven't read it yet, but he was giving us an overview during the talk. And what we really need to do going forward, aside from mitigation and adaptation, is the third option, which is to suck carbon out of the atmosphere. And he was talking about all of these technologies uh, that are in their development and 
pretty much in their infancy right now, such as carbon negative materials to build buildings and to develop sidewalks, and all these hypothetical ideas of, you know, possibly seaweed farms that cover a tenth of the world's oceans that both sequester carbon and produce high quality fish proteins to feed the world simultaneously. And so that even though these may seem like highly imaginative ideas, he challenged us to think about 1915, 100 years ago, going forward to 1950, the world completely changed. It went from a world where people hadn't heard of communism to where half the world's population was living under a communist regime. It went from a totally rural, horse-driven, unelectrified lifestyle to the age of the automobile, and everyone had electricity. So this revolutionary change that happened in 35 years we need to remember that going forward to 2050 when the ipcc points out that we need to be um cutting down our carbon emissions by 80 percent so uh with that i hope that you stay tuned for more videos i hope that you look into these amazing books that tim has written he is uh an amazing communicator he takes the science and he takes the uh the hope necessary to look forward on these issues and he combines them in a very very engaging way uh, so until next time enjoy